Hello YouTube, welcome to the Fake Milk Character Study Part 14. And in today's episode, based on the title, you should already be able to tell what the topic is going to be. Today, I want to dive deeper into the psychology of our boy Hemingway. Because as I've said in previous parts, I have diagnosed the man with uh, a serious case of vulnerable narcissism. And I want to explain the details and uh, the very elements that make me believe that this diagnosis is correct. Because there is a plethora of things, of men's, that have happened across the years that paint him as such, and they are all hilarious. But the reason why it's such an ad hoc topic right now is because he himself gave me a lot of material to work with for this month. Because the more time passes, the more unhinged he becomes. All of the videos I'm making about him get views, and he himself watches them. And I must say that I am fairly convinced he watches them constantly and repetitively. Because if you actually, actually stay around and you check the videos, and you look at the latest comments, there's always an apparition of soccer accounts at one point or the other, even in old installments. And these tend to be the most hilarious one because when an episode comes out, he of course spurges out and he posts a bunch of comments that tend to just be uh, stupid because it's in the heat of the moment. So he's just, you know, he's just completely insane and he writes whatever. But when time goes by and he has time to actually digest it and cry in the corner for a while, he comes back and he's trying to cope. And those copes actually teach me a lot. Because people, people's excuses about their situation usually say more about them than the situation themselves. And that is what I have compiled for you today. It's a list of all of these moments. And I'm going to use them to, of course, one, make fun of Bloho, and two, crush him a little bit more and show him who he truly is. The person that I'm certain he hates deeply and it's the reason why he actually tries to camouflage it with this badass persona. So the first thing that ticked me off and made me want to make this video was the comment that he left under a previous installment where he was trying to defend the stupid dietary advices that he gave to teenagers. Just to refresh your memory, that included replacing vegetables by orange juice and over the board just over consuming fatty products to the point that all of his trainees would become overweight and eventually develop heart problems and just health problems in general. And his excuse and his big appeal to popularity was that this was actually the vertical diet. He was just applying the, the vertical diet to his clients. And because the vertical diet is recognized by many as a good type of nutrition base for athletes, he therefore believes that it's good for everyone. Now, the first thing and the first problem of that logic, Blue Blue, is that you're not an athlete. You're an overweight for the old guy. You are obese. You are not athletic in any sense of the term at all. You can barely bend over to tie your shoes. We both know that. I know that running five minutes just wins you completely. You have a complete inability to perform anything outside of one rep max squat or deadlifts. And even then, you take 50 minute breaks in between. You've admitted that yourself. You admitted that you sometimes take naps in between sets. Do you know any athletes that take naps in between sets? Or baths? Full on baths. The worst part is that he said that because he thought it made, me look, made him look cool. He said that because he thought that taking baths in between sets was a sign of luxury. Like, like rich people, that's what they do. So during the day, they just take a break to take a bath. Blah, blah. No one does that in the real world. It's that weird fabrication you have in your head. The only thing you're doing is you're wasting water. That's it. And you're being lazy. Same for the naps. I, I must say I'm fairly certain that the naps thing comes from someone else. He copied that from someone else. I cannot fathom him actually coming up with that and thinking that it makes him look cool. Even he isn't that stupid. But he was that stupid for the vertical diet because he called back and he referred back to Stan Efferding. He said, oh, I say that because that's what Stan is, is making his clients do. Well, first off, Stan Efferding is coaching actual athletes, adults, not teenagers that he hunted on Facebook like some sort of weird pedophile. 
right? I don't think that Stan F. Udding logs on on Facebook at 3 a.m. under a false profile to send messages to 14-year-old boys. I highly doubt that. You do that. And then you score those clients that, of course, have no idea what they're doing, and you make them do those stupid things. So if Stan F. Udding is making an athlete drink orange juice in replacement for veggies, even that is stupid. But when you do that with a teen, that's egregious. Why? Teenagers need to develop good dietary habits that they can then carry on to their adult life. Why? So that they don't end up like you. You are the fat, overweight golem that you are because your parents never actually put you on a strict regimen. I'm fairly certain that your diet when you were a teen was McDonald's, Burger King, Cheetos, Doritos, and Coca-Cola. That's all you ate and all you drank. I'm certain that you didn't even consume one glass of water a day because we have seen those pictures of you in high school. You were obese. You still are to this day. So in a sense, you're a product of your environment. But don't replicate that with other people. Stop trying to make everyone look like you. And on top of that, I know it's going to be shocking to you. Uh, you're not Stan Effeding, right? If I, if I were to compare you and Stan Effeding, let's make a tally, right? You're going to see that it's fairly brutal. Stan Effeding has a wife, he has children, he has multiple properties in good neighborhoods, he also has the ability to take walks in said good neighborhoods, meaning that he actually goes outside, he's fairly tan or red, whatever way you want to put it, meaning that he actually takes the sun, he has friends in the public community, right? People respect him. He was showcased on multiple podcasts. He has a very successful YouTube channel. He, on top of that, is a very successful powerlifter. He has world records. He's a successful bodybuilder. He won some shows. He also made a ton of money. He appeared on TV. He is overall a very successful man. Now, let's take a look at your life. You have no children, no wife, no house, no properties, you don't go outside, you're overweight, you look like shit, you never actually won any powerlifting competitions, your lifts are shit, you don't go outside to work because you're too afraid of hajis that are going to punk you from behind, and you're poor. So for now, it's a, it's a zero to zero, it, there's no comparison. The only thing I can think of that makes you similar to Stan Efforting is your bald head. That's it. Because even in size, he's like six feet, so he mugs you completely. You're pale as an ass because you never go outside. Uh, I think the comparison with Gollum was even a little bit too generous because at least Gollum, at some point, you know, he fished, he had friends in the past, he had things to call back on. You have nothing. He had his precious. What is your precious? You killed your dog. You have no one in your life. So no, you're not Stan Effeding. And all of the dietary advice that you give are nonsense because, again, you're not that guy. Okay, you're Jason Bloho, the YouTube lol cow, that's all you are. You're a clown for us to make fun of. That's it. And this is interesting because to call back to the vulnerable narcissism part, this is very prevalent in that type of individual. They hate themselves so much that they're constantly trying to reinvent themselves. And the easiest way to reinvent yourself when you have no personality to speak of is to just copy someone else. It's the reason why we have seen Bloho back in the past uh, make imitations of the Hodge twins. He imitated also The Rock with the eyebrow thing. He imitated, imitated movies and he took quotes from movies to create a brand new persona. And he also now is trying to imitate Stan Effeding. But it's not the only thing. I also firmly believe, and I'll touch upon that later, that he also thinks that eating like Stan Effeding and Brian Shaw makes him like them. Like he thinks that because he eats rice and bison like them and he drinks juice, then somehow he creates a connection with these guys. Again, I'm going to just be mean for the sake of being mean. Look at Brian Shaw's life. He's a multiple time uh, uh, world's strongest man. He has a wife, he has kids, a house, plenty of money, a successful YouTube channel. Not all of those things you don't have, but those are things that he craves. And therefore, he thinks that if he creates that comparison, it sort of works. He has them like uh, by transposition. Sorry, blah, blah, it doesn't work like that. You can't just, you know, name drop people and, and people are going to think that you're associated. And also, I must say, I'm fairly certain that if I asked Stan Effeding who you are, he wouldn't know because you're completely irrelevant. You're a stain 
on the, the, the toilet seat that is YouTube Fitness, right? You're the turd that we've been trying to flush for five years now and that just refuses to go. At some point, it's time to just let go, disappear into the void. It'll be so much easier for you. So that's one. The second is a quote that I read from a book and that immediately reminded me of Bloho as well. Because you see, uh, a vulnerable narcissist, and narcissists in general, tend to be unbearable to be around because, of course, they're very needy people, they lie constantly, and therefore, they're just not good company. But through my extensive espionage, I can tell you for a fact that Bloho has a circle of friends, quote-unquote. He has people he talks, he talks to regularly. He has people he chats with. But the funny thing is that if you look at them and you start digging into their profiles and their private lives, you quickly come to the realization that they're exactly like him. Because like attracts like. I've always said it. Anyone with a sane mind takes one look at Bloho and thinks, okay, there's something wrong with him. He has a mental problem. He's not a good person. But some people never detect that. And you know why? It's either because they're naive or because they showcase the same problems. I've seen that across the board with people who defend Jason. It's because they look like him, either physically or mentally. And therefore, when you attack him, you attack them. And they don't like that. But when I actually dug and I looked at his friend, that quote came into my head. And that quote was, show me your friends and I'll tell you who you are. And across the board, all of Bloho's friends are pieces of shit. I dug things about guys who ate dogs, who did sexual tourism in Asia, guys who engaged in blatant racism on social media under false accounts, of course, because it's so much easier when your real identity is not linked to it. Guys who were also, you know, openly disrespectful towards, you know, homosexuals. I have some phone recordings that I will be playing for you guys on video when we finally get to that topic. Things that came from Blaha's mouth and you will be flabbergasted because it's insane to see how deep he is in the closet and how hateful he has become. But what shocked me as well is the physiques of these guys. Because for a strength athlete and someone who apparently only trains athletes, it's insane to see that every single person he speaks to and is on friendly terms with is overweight and out of shape. Like, I thought you had a table of cough that were all elite levels. So how come when I click on their pictures, they all look like flamby? They all look like you, right? It's like the blob. It's, they're all human blobs. So what happened? What went wrong? Right? Is it the vertical diet that makes you like this? Because if that's the case, you need to just stop eating so much risen and, you know, risen. Bison and rice, because that's the reason why you look like this. Your body doesn't have the ability to handle all of those calories, because you're 5'3". You should, you know, maybe go back on a vegan diet. It might suit you. But in that realm, I've also found something even more disgusting. I have found that all of these friends that Bluehoo has, that he's friendly on in social media, in private messages, even they are not safe from him, because he talks shit about them behind their back. Right, there's one guy that is on YouTube as well. I think his name is Robson something. He's also an older guy and he's into strength as well. He's very similar to Jason in that he's not the most aesthetically pleasing. He's bald and he's short. But I say that while at the same time, while at the same time admitting the fact that I don't dislike the guy. I think the guy is nice. He's just not super aware of what is going on around him, I believe. And I know that he's on very friendly terms with Jason to the point that he sort of sucks his dick a little bit, that he always posts nice comments under his videos. Well, Robson, I don't know if you watch these videos, I don't think you do, but uh, if you end up by chance just watching this, know one thing. Jason talks shit about you constantly to his friends behind your back. He's called you Quasimodo behind your back. He's called you a golem. He said to the people that you're annoying, posting comments all the time on his channel. Why do you think he sometimes ignores you? He reads all of his comments compulsively to delete the ones that he doesn't like. He ignores you sometimes. Why? Because he said to other people that you are only trying to get popular off of him and he doesn't like that. He doesn't want his subscribers to go to your channel. It's the reason why he's never mentioned you on his channel. He never gave you a shout out. I thought you were buddy buddy. So what's going on here? You do all the work and he's just treating you like a dog? Because that's what's going on. But that's to point out that the thing with vulnerable narcissists 
is that you could think that they would then have empathy for the weak and for people below them, but they don't because they detest weakness in themselves and others. And therefore, when they sense someone weaker than them, they treat them like shit, like Bloho is doing to that guy, like Bloho is doing to his quote unquote clients. Have you seen the way Bloho treats his imaginary clients? He talks about them as if they were all clinically retarded. You look at his clients' updates, he says that his clients don't know how to lift. When he imitates their form, he lifts like a complete spaz, like someone who has cerebral palsy, all for the sake of making them look dumb. But the question I must ask is, who in their right mind would pay good money for a guy as stupid as Bloho to clown them on his own channel? No one. And on top of that, he's trying to pretend that these guys are, you know, law lawyers and dentists and like big shots. I don't know a single person that pulls 80k a year that wouldn't see through his guy this guy's bullshit. Like across the board, again, they're all teens. But in his fantasy, when he's painting them, he has to paint them as important because it, it connects him to them. So it makes him important, but they can't be more important than him because then he looks bad. And that's also the reason why. And this is something I'm going to keep for later. Jason has sabotaged some of his clients on purpose. I know for a fact he has clients that I got in contact with that were stronger than him. And you know what happened when they started getting stronger than him? He started getting pissed off. He was acting like a little prick towards them and trying to change their training and programs and forms, telling them to deload. Why? Because they were mugging him and he couldn't stand it. But the problem, Jason, is that everyone mugs you. Everyone mugs you. People who don't even train for strength mug you because your lifts are total garbage and it's no one's fault. Don't take it out on the weird schizophrenic fantasies that you have of non-existent clients. Now, I sort of spoken, spoke about veganism for a second here. This was because the topic of vegan gains arose in my mind. Very recently, vegan gains snapped his shit up again because his legs are made of cardboard, apparently. And of course, Bloho couldn't wait for the chance to make fun of the guy because all vegans are weak and all vegans are pussies, etc., etc. We, we know the diatribe. It's incredibly uh, pathetic on Bloho's part to make fun of someone who gets hurt because he gets hurt constantly. But most importantly, it's interesting to see the timing of this because Bloho made fun of vegan gang Richard because he snapped his leg while at the same time himself admitting that he would never be able to squat 700 pounds. So he gave up on the, on the go, quote unquote, even though he never squatted 600 and is now back to squatting 400 pounds to depth, which again proves the fact that the plates are fake. You don't go to a parallel 600 pound squat to 400 to depth. It's it just ask any powerlifter. It's not possible. It, that, that ratio makes no sense. But the funny thing is that the reason why he started doing that is because, and I've heard that from, you know, a party outside of my usual sources. I have learned that from someone who also hates Jason. And Jason knows that guy hates him. I'm not going to reveal his name yet. It's going to be a surprise for later. But that guy told me that from what we know, a client of Jason started squatting to death, squatted more than Bloho, and Bloho decided that his ego couldn't take it, he had to squat to death. And he was very surprised, of course, to realize that he can barely squat 400 pounds, because that's what happens when you squat on a box that's 18 inches all the time. But the comparison with vegan gains doesn't stop here, because as you will come to understand, as I said, Vulnerable narcissists are extremely vicious with people. They are constantly bad-mouthing people. And it's why Bloho made a business out of making drama videos. It's become, because it suited him perfectly. He, informative videos, he makes them because he wants to appear relevant. But at the end of the day, that's not what makes him tick. That's not what, what excites him in this life. And you can tell. L try, try. Try listening to one of his informative videos and not fall asleep, it's almost impossible. This, this guy is way too boring. But when you go back to his drama videos, now he has a little bit more peps. Why? Because he's finally doing what he loves, which is shitting on people when they cannot access him. You know, being a keyboard warrior, that's what he loves. Because there's no risk involved, and he gets to just 
deload and you know don't load all of his insecurity on other people and that sadly for him but thankfully for us doesn't really help because at the end of the day the, the pit of sorrow in his heart can never be fulfilled and therefore he has to resort to suck accounts something that he's done on my channel to post stupid comments that i make fun of but also on his own channels because i said in the past he used female suck accounts to go on his videos and call himself handsome again i really want you to think about this think about the desperation of a man who at 4 a.m is so alone and miserable that he goes on google types pretty girl clicks on the first image copy past it creates a new youtube account with a random female name and then goes on his own video and leaves a comment right this is insane as i said in the past it's borderline schizophrenic the comment that i spotted that makes me say that and think that is that recently on a ton of his videos a comment started appearing a comment by a man who pretended to have a certain amount of lifts saying that he was feeling bad about them because he was on drugs and he was weak and all of these lifts were exactly on the level of jason and that could be two things it's either a troll in which case jason is so stupid that he hasn't even realized it's a troll because he answered or it's jason himself he made the accounts because his strength has been regressing and therefore he feels the need to validate himself and so he posts those comments so that other people in the video can actually give him a little bit more you know comfort but the reason why he doesn't just do it in video and doesn't admit to be weak is because he still is clinging to his ego and to his image he cannot let go of it it's the reason why he'll never actually get out of that hole the only way for a vulnerable narcissist to get out is to prioritize the vulnerability and let go of the narcissism but that's why the mental illness is so dangerous is because it's almost impossible and the last sign of someone who is just desperate for attention is a transformation post that he published on his private page recently where he made he had a picture of him when he was obese at 300 pounds and a picture of him now and it's so funny because he still looks terrible before and after makes no difference and he's still obese so we went from obese to obese i don't really see a difference here but he propped that and he presented that as this big inspirational thing and i looked at this and i realized in one second that it was actually the exact opposite because in the first picture he was with his wife and in the second picture he's by himself so essentially what you've done is that you somehow managed to trick a poor woman into marrying you and you managed to even fuck that up the state that you are in right now is 15 times worse than what you were three years ago and what you will be in three years will also be 15 times worse your life is a ticking time bomb and i cannot wait for it to go off because it will eventually and it'll just be a just punishment for everything that you've done so that is for the posts now if we're going to continue on the topic if we call back to what i've said in the past about the ptsd the death threats he sent to pregnant women and all of the abuse he dished out to people like jeff nippert and alex you realize one thing you realize that the only way he can actually uh, feel whole is to point the fingers at others and to actually try to make them feel bad about themselves but he never takes any risk because he is very vulnerable he's a very fragile person he would never confront anyone physically in real life he's constantly having to use proxies to actually fulfill his weird twisted fantasies and across the board when, what we've seen about the alex and uh, jeff comments about their height calling them midgets etc manlets dwarfs also again shows that he points out things that he does himself onto others and that opens a very dark door because he has on my videos called me a number of things he all, of course he called me a muslim because anyone that he hates becomes a muslim which means that we you would think that a lot of the, the the human population on earth is muslim it's actually many more than you think you could have believed that to become a muslim you have to accept allah as a one and only god but that's not it at all actually the only thing you have to be to become a haji is just to be hated by bloho and that's it you're in that's that's actually an interesting way to convert to a religion i believe but 
when it comes to actually taking it, right, he cannot. I mean that he's constantly pointing the finger, calling out people. But when you actually do that back to him, he recalls. So what he called me was, he called me short. He said I was stinky. I couldn't speak properly. I was weird. I was small. He said that women didn't like me. He called me out for my accent, which is not really relevant, but funny still. He, what did he say besides that? He also made accusations that I will keep for later because they're more relevant. But across the board, again, he's presenting me as someone who is that short, weird, small, stinky dude who, uh, who is just completely rejected by women. Based on that painting, who do you think of? It's, it's not really hard to find. It's himself. He is constantly trying to project who he is onto himself, onto other people, sorry. And it's so evident that at some point you think, when will you realize that we can actually tell what you're doing? He also sent me multiple death threats, none of which came to fruition because I'm still here. And he also threatened to come to my house, which I'm still waiting. The, the reason why I'm not afraid, Jason, is because to get to where I live, you would one, need a car, so I'm safe. You would need to take the plane, so I'm also safe because you're broke and you have no money. You would need to actually be able to handle harsh environments. And I know that you cannot take the cold or the heat, so that's not going to happen either. So I'm fairly protected, plus there's dogs around. So, you know, I think they can smell you for a few, from a few miles. And I do believe that some of them have beef with you. The, the thing that they would want to do the most is to avenge their, their lost brother. If they could take a bite out of your pale ass to avenge their brother Nova, they would, they would be over the moon. So please, do show up. Do show up. We'll see if you're actually an athlete when you have dogs running after you. That could be a good test for your cardio, right? Because apparently you have amazing cardio. And that links directly to the fact that he, op he opens his mouth constantly, but he cannot take the heat. And he's shown that in the past, because when people insult him, he whines about it. He doesn't like it, or he makes videos about it. We've seen that with Igor from Vitrivian Physique. When Igor said that Bloho had shit genetics, Bloho made a video crying about it and calling him a bully, pretty much. And he also cannot reveal that. For the most part, he keeps that part hidden, because it would show him as vulnerable because people who are vulnerable whine. They don't do anything about things, they just whine. And yet, behind the scenes again, that is the bread and butter of Jason Blow. He is constantly trying to petition YouTube to get videos deleted. I have received multiple emails of YouTube bots asking me why my videos were being flagged because they could see that there was some suspicious activity there. And therefore, it wasn't actually going to go anywhere. But this shows that this guy goes on my videos with multiple stock accounts and reports them. Why? He wants them gone. He hates the truth. He doesn't want people to actually see him for what he is. But in reality, what I'm doing, Jason, is I'm doing you a favor. I'm holding up a mirror. If you don't like what you see, the problem is not the mirror. It's you. And at the end of the day, you can't touch those videos. We both know you can't. Because I've been in contact with people who have had issues with you on YouTube and they've realized one thing, you're all bark and no bite. When you actually file those copyright strikes, when people challenge them and threaten to take you to court, you back down and you remove the strikes. So that goes for all of the people who had their channels deleted by Jason. He's a bitch. Actually push him. Tell him, okay, we'll go, we'll go face the judge. We'll see what the judge says. He'll just, he'll fold. He has no money. What do you think he's going to do? He has no money whatsoever. He cannot fight in a court of law. And that's the reason why there's a multitude of videos out there with a million views about Bloho, which are still up. Why? Why do you think he's keeping these videos up that are so terrible for his image? Well, it's because he cannot touch them. So even if he could file a strike against those videos, he can't do anything. I would gladly dip into my 401k to sue that guy. It would be just, it would be Christmas. I would have so much fun. I already have a lawyer. You know what? I'll just tell the guy, go destroy that dude. He'll do it gladly. It won't even touch me, but I know it would bury you. Financially, you could never recover. So please give me a chance. Right now, I don't have the chance. Please go ahead, strike my videos. You won't do it. And the reason why 
I'm also a bit reticent to include footage about Bloho is that I have seen that the algorithm in the past has started to link my videos with him and I don't want to give that fat caveman views. Therefore, it's easier to just not deal with that. Also, you can get instant strikes by YouTube directly and that's something I want to avoid because I can sue Bloho, but I can sue YouTube. Sadly, I'm not at that level yet. So that's that. But he did get a ton of channels deleted. He still deletes people's comments on his videos because, of course, he cannot take the heat. He is what I call a cry bully. And vulnerable narcissists tend to be cry bullies constantly, meaning that they will go out and attack people, but the second they are met with the same energy, they recoil because they cannot really handle that, right? They just want to be able to talk shit. They never want any repercussions. And it's why he stopped going at expos. I think he went to the expo, he started ribbing with the guys, and they just said, they, they must have just looked at him, taken one look at the guy and said, oh, you're fat. And he was like, oh, he went into the bathroom, cried for 15 minutes and just left and never came back. Because real life is not the internet. And I think that we have seen plenty of proofs of the way Jason behaves in real life. We've seen Tommy's garage. He was so incredibly better on that show. It was unbelievable. He was sitting like this. You know, people who don't, who they don't want to take too much space because they don't want people to, to notice them. He was sitting like this. Like women next to him were mugging him. It was incredible. He wouldn't move. And he would also look around and replicate his behavior based on others. Another trait of the vulnerable narcissist. When you are not the dominant member of a group, you tend to copy the behavior of the people in the group that you believe are dominant. And guess who he copied? Women. He would look at women and behave exactly like him. No wonder he's so feminine in his behavior. Most likely he is a mama's boy. He was raised only by his mom, which is why he's such a wimp. And after that, he could only really look up to women. That's why he behaves in a sense like the existential perversion of femininity that he embodies. I've said it in the past, put on a wig. At, at this point, it's your destiny, put on a wig. It won't make you anything special because it's too late for you now, but at least you could live life as intended as you want and not put on this fake machismo that just looks so out of place. People can tell, and it's why he doesn't do that in real life. We have no clips of him acting alpha in real life. Actually, I'm lying, we have one. We have potentially the most uncomfortable clip that I've ever seen on a gym collaboration. That was when Bloho was working out with Big J and Big J was on the chest press, whatever you call that machine. And Bloho was standing like this close to him, looking at him, breathing through his nostrils and just staring at him. This is when you can tell that this guy has no idea what it means to be a man. For him, being a man, and being like alpha in the gym is staring your gym body in the face and breathing heavily on them as they do their exercise. What do you think this does? It motivates the guy. Uh, if anything, if someone did that to me, I would be on the phone with the authorities to report a sexual predator. I wouldn't be pumped at all. And most normal guys would start a fight if you did that with them or actually have choice words to say because it's really weird. Bro, stop doing that to people. I hope you don't do that to people. But apparently that's what he believes is appropriate behavior. Of course, that's only in controlled environment. When he's with people, he doesn't know, he doesn't act like that. So Tommy Garage, he was just a little bitch. And the funniest part is that the producer of the show, Tommy's Garage, also said that he was a little bitch, that he behaved like a wimp, that every single dude in the assembly treated him like shit because they could sense that he wasn't that. He wasn't a real one. And there's a clip that I'm, I'm sure people have seen of Moon Cookie, and we'll talk about Moon Cookie more in later episodes because there's a lot of juicy stuff. But there's a clip of Moon Cookie being hugged and like touched by another man. And you see Bloho like two meters away looking uncomfortable. Like he knows he cannot say anything. Like your girlfriend is being just, you know, weirdly inappropriate with another guy, but you're such a cock that you know that if you open your mouth, once you're home, she's going to punch you in the face. That That's the level of betterness that this guy embodies. There's also the episode of the, the swimming pool party, which is extremely relevant because it's 4th of July today. 
4th of July. I'm actually recording this video after my deadlifts. After that, I'm going to take a shower. I'm going to go eat some hot dogs with my family. And then we're going to go around the fire and just tell stories and have a good time. I say that because I know that none of these things Bloho will do. Bloho will spend the night by himself listening to fireworks outside his house and just cry himself to sleep. Because this is the life he chose. That's what happens. But when you go back to the story of the, the swimming pool, he was invited to a, a pool party. So of course, the vulnerable narcissist that he is showed up wearing a shirt. What lifter do you know is invited to a pool party and shows up with a shirt? Like, you're a lifter. You look good. You get a chance to impress people and show off the muscles and mock people and be admired. You do it. But when you're the fat kid who stole other people's cake at 4 p.m. when it was time for a break, you don't. He's the kid who, when we all went to the beach or the pool, used to wear a t-shirt because he was too afraid that his man boobs were going to float around. That's who he is. I don't call that being alpha. I call that being completely submissive. And on top of that, I know from a secure source that he brought a gun. He was invited to a pool party, an event to relax with people, and he brought a gun. Like, why would you need a gun to a pool party? Who do you think is going to show up? Al-Qaeda? You think these guys with the turbans are going to show up in their speedos and are going to blow themselves up? I've said it in the past. No one is interested about that at that level. You're not that important. But I think that this is just an excuse. The reason why he did that is because it was a pool party in Texas, and therefore he knew that there was a chance a veteran was going to recognize him and punch him in the face. And as the coward that he is, he took a gun because he cannot handle himself in a fist fight. But can you imagine that situation? He is by himself. It's 90 degrees out. He's wearing shorts, cargo shorts, and a shirt. Everyone is having fun around him, drinking alcohol, swimming, showing off their bodies. He's just that weird entity in the corner that smells with a gun tucked in the west bend that just like sort of looks around for hajis. What life even is that? How is it possible to live like this? And I know for a fact, again, that he spoke to no one at that party. So essentially his afternoon was show up, stand up, go home. Very exciting. That truly seems like someone who's a social butterfly and who has just a, an aura about him. Right? That's how you're supposed to behave at a pool party. I don't think so. I think that's a sign of a mental issue. And but that's, of course, maybe it's, it's what it means to be a badass Texan. For the guys who live in Texas, you tell me, maybe that's the culture. Like, real men in Texas go to swimming pools and they just stand around and they don't enter the water. Maybe because swimming is gay. I don't know. I don't know. I'm sure that he could spin a version about swimming being gay because other men are swimming and their dicks are in the water. Then your dick is in the water, so it's gay. You never know with that guy. The one thing, though, that he does have in common with badass Texans who are also policemen and fight crime is that he has a privileged contact with the authorities because he contacts them whenever he can. He has called the police so many times. The amount of phone calls is unreal. To the point where his local police at some point told him to just stop calling because he was just annoying them. Every single time he thought someone was coming after him, he would call. He would call them because people sent him messages. Again, poor officer on the phone with that guy trying to understand what he's talking about, about YouTube and him being a salary and people leaving mean comments. Like... I would just, you know, hang up the phone and just, you know, give up. Give back my badge and say, I cannot deal with that guy. And eventually they just barred him from calling completely. But it doesn't stop him from pretending that he's in contact with the FBI. He said he opened a file with the FBI. I, the, the FBI. The FBI has better things to do. I'm pretty sure you call the... If you call 911 in the US and for a bogus reason, they will show up to your house and arrest you. You will have issues because you are wasting an agent's time. Now think about the FBI. First off, how would Blow even get the phone number of someone from the FBI? He's watched X-Files one too many times. You can't just call an FBI agent. The FBI contacts you or the police puts you in contact with the FBI. Can you imagine the amount of work these guys would have to do 
if their phone number was widely available. If you could just call an agent at any point on his personal phone, these guys would just go completely insane. But that's what he said he did. So again, trying to paint himself as a detective, like, oh, I have a privileged relationship. No, you don't. I'm still waiting for your cop buddies to show up to my door. There's plenty of cops around where I live. I know a lot of them. None of them know you. So when you tell me you're going to send your buddies that work at the police force at my door, I laugh. Because I know for a fact that even if you knew these guys, they would hate you. They don't like your type. Because you're just a butter. And the FBI is the exact same. There's no file open, actually. It, it wasn't really, you know, something that is verifiable. But I tried to find anything relevant in terms of, you know, police cases, FBI public cases, whatever I could find with his name on it. And I could find nothing. The only thing that comes out when you look his name is his arrest. When he got arrested and lied to the police about being 5'11". That's all I could find. And he also tried to spin that lie when he said that there was a bomb threat on his street. Like, this is how vulnerable he is. He tried to make his subscribers feel bad about himself by pretending that someone was going to try and bomb him. Like, no one would waste a bomb on you. Why would we waste a bomb on you? It's so much easier to throw you on the internet. It does so much more damage. I'm not going to waste TNT. That's a, it's a valuable commodity. Plus, it could hurt other people. The only person that needs to be hurt is you. So that bomb threat, of course, never happened. And if you try and check the records, there's no recollection of that bomb threat. But of course, that's just a way for him to appear, again, important, like he has connections, and he's trying also to use that to scare people. Of course, it doesn't work, because when you send the same death threats 15 times, at some point, people just stop, you know, shaking their boots. Like, it already didn't work when you threatened me the first time. He's threatened me the exact same way for every single occurrence of the series, to the point where I sometimes wonder, does he have a memory, or are we dealing with an actual lemming? Does he just forget? I, I often, you know, entertain that thought. Sometimes I think that he just forgets I make these videos and then another one comes out and he just, it just brings him back to reality and he types the same message. I don't know. It's, uh, again, it's, a, it's an application of vulnerable narcissism. He just cannot accept the fact that he is what he is. And therefore, when someone speaks about it, it just brings him back to that reality that he hates so much. But Bloho, you cannot escape reality. You should have taken the red pill a long time ago and changed your ways, but you didn't. You're blue pilled. And that's what's creating all of your problems, by the way. Because crying to YouTube and calling people's moms is certainly not going to change the problem and solve it. Uh, YouTube has given up on you completely, by the way. I'm certain that even if I did something that would actually warrant my channel being shut down, they wouldn't care because you're just completely irrelevant. They don't even bother anymore. And that will lead directly to the topic of incels. But first, I need to check the time. All right, actually, we are 43 minutes in, so we're going to stop here. I'm going to use the topic of incels and link it to something else because I think it would fit better in the theme of the video that I'm going to make about women and the relationship that he has. There are two big videos to look out for, the one about women and the one about his potential homosexuality. Uh, I don't know when they're going to come out. You're going to be able to tell based on the title, but you can still expect monthly installments and you can still expect me to read some of his messages. There's also a video that's going to be focused on his racism, where I'm going to be reading to you some of the, the rap lyrics that Bloch himself wrote, that's going to be a good time. So we are still in for a lot of juicy mints. Thank you for watching. Have a good day.